Hello, welcome to Kingdom Secrets Rema. Today we are looking at seven impactful messages from Apostle Joshua Sama. And I must say, it wasn't easy curating these seven messages because Apostle has preached and ministered several sermons and picking seven out of it, seven impactful messages out of it, or seven most impactful messages out of it, took us a long time trying to curate these messages together. We believe strongly that if anyone listens to these seven messages, it will transform his or her spiritual experience. It will bring the person to a place of stability in his, his or her Christian journey. And that's why we've curated these seven messages. Now, first on our list, first message on our list is titled, Be Like Him. <laughs> when you trespass the principles of God, the Holy Ghost, you feel the check in you. When you get to a point where you are comfortable with misrepresenting Christ, you need a retreat. Quick. Quick. Whatever it is that you're doing, you need a radical retreat alone. Why do we pick be like him? Now, be like him is the first made publicly available by um, by, e, by, by Quinenia Media, by ENI Media, and be like him was preached back there in Zaria in 2011. Now, be like him seeks to address our the foundation of our Christian journey, and that's one of why it made it to this list. You know, in our Christian journey, what do we seek to be like? What do we want to be like? And uh, we want to be like Jesus, looking up to Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So, in this message, it addresses the foundation of the Christian journey. It addresses the conviction we have. Why are we here? Why are we Christians? Why are we believers of Christ? Now, how you get saved matters. Many people get saved because um, they are running from enemies. Many people get saved because they believe by getting saved, they will have access to wealth. Many people get saved because um, they believe um, being a Christian is one of the, a, the cool things to do. You know, why you get saved matters. And that determines that determines the, um, how far you will go as a Christian, you know. So getting the foundation ready, getting the foundation ready, understanding you are saved to become a replica of Jesus. You are saved to be like Jesus, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, you know. Uh, in this message, I want to talk about what are the keys to become like him? What are the keys to become like him? Through koinonia, yes, if you listen to the message, Apostle talked about that, that through koinonia, we become like him. But when we spend time in the presence of God, we become like him. And this is a message I believe every Christian should listen to. Because it's going to give you that genuine hunger. It will give you, it will give you that genuine stability you need to understand why you are here. And it gives you a pointer. Apostle talked about you need to know you need to know what you are becoming you know it, it's not it's not an endless race it's a race where you know exactly what you are being transformed into and when you understand that your role model your 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 point of call what you are being modified into is christ you can know exactly and you have a metric to measure that transformation as you are becoming like Christ. Don't forget, I was talking about koinonia, that when we spend time in the presence of God, we tend to become to become like, like Jesus. In this message, Apostle also talked about um, the deception about people that claim they went to heaven and came back and they are more concerned about selling videos and cassettes and books, you know, and making revenue. And, and it's true. If you truly go to heaven and you have a revelation about heaven and you come back, you won't be so much concerned about the profit you make from selling videos and selling books um, about heaven. You, you, you'll be willing to sell your house. You know, my, my local pastor in my church, Pastor Peter Elisoni, used to tell us that if you really go to heaven and you have an encounter in, about, about heaven, he said you want to sell, you want to sell your house. To make sure the whole world hear about Jesus, the conviction will be too strong on you. You want to sell everything to make sure that people hear about Jesus. So if you go to heaven and you have an encounter and you come back with a revelation, 
you won't be you won't be carried away about the the sales of the materials and the books you know that you that that you have from those encounters so in this message apostle also talked about the fruit of the spirit the one of the scripture he looked at is galatians chapter 5 verse 22 galatians chapter 5 verse 22 talking about the fruit of the spirit talking about the fruit of the spirit and apostle says something remarkable he says that the fruit of the spirit as a believer you can spend time praying it into your life you should not just um it's not just a verse to, to memorize that all those fruits spend time picking it one by one and praying into your life joy pray about joy pray about love into your life pray peace into your life pray long suffering gentleness goodness and faith into your life all just take out time to pray and make sure that they are manifested into your life in this message he talked about the the works of the flesh and he prayed he prayed he, he led the believers to pray against the works of the flesh in their life today we have believers who are already leaders uh, in churches uh, the leaders in ministry whose foundation has not been solidified who don't even understand why they are in this journey but when you are when you are when your foundation is rightly built and you understand why you are in this journey it gives you a focus and it sets you it gives you stability i believe this message is what everyone should listen to see me as he hits you yield to that hitting tonight is not the night where you pretend as though he's touching your neighbor because i will share and then we'll raise a cry are you listening to me we want to truly represent the kingdom in its fullness let me tell you the proof that you are truly christ-like it's not when you heal the sick if you have to pray in tongues for your community to know you are a christian you are not a real christian that every time they see you you display at your default the attributes of the christ life there's nothing as beautiful as seeing the manifestation of the gifts of the spirit come upon a truly yielded life full of character and expression of the fullness of what christ is did you know that your lifestyle affects people even more than your what you do on stage hallelujah there are certain people that respect you today and especially for we ministers not because of the sermon even a believer is that when you trespass the principles of god the holy ghost you feel the check in you when you get to a point where you are comfortable with misrepresenting Christ, you need a retreat. Quick. Quick. Whatever it is that you're doing, you need a radical retreat alone. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We must be thoroughly washed. We want the power of the Holy Ghost. We want the anointing. Many of us want to stand on the stage and have people come and hear you. Hear me, brother. If you're not thoroughly walked upon, the anointing that comes on you can kill you you know we like anointing and you just pack it seed and say manasseh i need all the grace upon your life not so my brother not in this revival that is coming there are some things that you don't get by impartation you walk it by your diligence and intimacy with the holy ghost hallelujah let's read up quickly because i really want us to pray and understand there will soon be a program in the church Put on therefore as the elect of God, holy and beloved. Are you ready now? Tender mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, patience or long suffering. He said, forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, do what? If any man has a quarrel, ladies, even as Christ forgave you, do what? Above all these things, put on what? Love, which is the bond of perfectness. Let the peace of God rule your hearts, to which also ye are called, in one body, and be ye thankful. Verse 16, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs 
singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. The last verse. And whatever ye do in word or deed, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God and the Father by Him. There is need for us. And let me tell you something. This is what I love about the Orthodox Circle. You see, let me say something. Let's assume this is Orthodox and this is Pentecostal so charismatic. Are you following me now? The Orthodox Circle have done a great job in mastering the place of true Christian character and morality. That's why some of us who came from the Orthodox background before getting filled with the Holy Spirit, the remnant of that training still remains in us. I follow me now. And so, many Orthodox circles have rejected the side of the anointing. I follow me now. At the ministry of the Holy Spirit. And they argue about tongues, argue about all of this, and live under the law, and do all kinds of things. But one thing I can tell you, is that in many Orthodox circles, when someone is sick, the next 12, 20, 30 minutes, you see people rushing to come and greet him. You hardly find that in Pentecostal circles. We always like celebrating. When you buy a new car, we can come to your house. But when somebody is dead, ah, you are not supposed to die. Who wants to identify? That's why in many Pentecostal circles, when their members die, they send them back to the mother church. They say, go and bury them. But when it's time to get married or celebrate a new post, what happens? I am your pastor. Are you getting blessed? Ah, it's a nice message. The Lord help us. Hallelujah. And so, both the Pentecostals and the Orthodox circles, they are not wrong. Both of them are incomplete. The revelations of Christ are complementary, not supplementary. Are you following me? Supplementary means you can replace one for another. The holiness movement was not a wrong movement. The word of faith movement was not a, a wrong movement. Are you following me now? The charismatic movement at Sousa Street was not wrong. But the trouble is when we section out a movement and base our entire lives on it, we find out that we are missing on other ingredients that are meant to give us complete preparation. So we have men and women who are very holy and contrite. And the world can attest to the fact that we love God. But then the sick come and they keep getting sick. People are poor. People are not living the lives they are supposed to live. And then we have on one side. Manifestations of the spirit. Wheelchairs. And all kinds of things. But when you talk about disorderliness and lawlessness. You still find it there. Hallelujah. And you see all kinds of things. Disorderliness. There must be a sense of decorum and maturity. A level of character and furnishment that the Spirit of God brings in us. Hallelujah. That's the reason why God is building us and equipping us. So that we are not only anointed. But we truly can represent him. Have you seen some people you always... Let me tell you. The more you become like Christ, the more you are well favored. Everyone wants to be around you. Hallelujah. Have you seen some people, every time they come around you, you don't know when you have removed something to sow into their lives. Or every time they come, you seem to respect them. You may be all... The second sermon on our list is knowing God experientially knowing God experientially beloved if you have not listened to this message if you have not listened to this message you can pause this video now and go and download it go and get it knowing God experientially this message was preached in 2012 in Zaria and I remember then and I was in I was on campus and uh, when I met, when I get to hear about Apostle Joshua Salman, and by the way, you can drop it in our comment section. When do you get to know about Apostle? Your first encounter about Apostle, when was it? If you could still remember, share, share the experience with us. This message can be divided into three parts. You know, the rise of of the, of the people, the revelation of the Father, the pruning of the Spirit. Now, talking about the rise of the people, Apostle talk, talk about the need for a training. 
and we should appreciate the training of the spirit because the Lord, the Lord is raising a generation. You know, He said the training will cost us. It will strip you of many things. It will strip you of your ambition. It will strip you of your desires. But wait in the training. You need to understand that as a curriculum by the Holy Spirit, as a curriculum by the Holy Spirit, that will subject us to. And we should not run out of incubation. We should stay until it makes us and finally bring out the beauty in all this this set of people that the lord is raising they did not come to the god because of their need they did not come to god because of what they want to get from god they come to god because they want to serve god they come to the lord because they want to be a part active part of his kingdom so here yeah, i'm supposed to talk about motivation what is your what are your motivation? What is driving? What is your driving force for uh, for Christianity? You know, he said the Christianity that gives God condition is a witchcraft, and from the pit of hell, the Christianity that gives God's condition is a witchcraft and is from the pit of hell. This is a message you need to listen at least five times. Very powerful message. You know, these are messages that build the foundation of a Christian belief. It gives you stability. It gives you structure. I also admonish that we should appreciate the revelations of the Father. We should honor their sacrifice. We should honor them. So for those, the consequence for those that did not stay in this training, those that did not know the patterns and the ways of God, the good, those that jumped out of the training of the Holy Spirit, you find in their life that Cain will be living in their life and Abel will also be living in their life. And for example, you can see them become pastor full of the Holy Spirit, but you, you, you see character deficiency and you begin to wonder how can someone be so eloquent about the scripture, someone moving in this dimension of the Holy Spirit and still you see you see deficiency in character you see them being oppressed um you see them under the influence of a manifestation of the flesh you know that's the consequence of those that do not stay and mature in the, in the pruning of the of the holy spirit you know it talks about he said he said you see a young pastor who is full of anointing but his choir his choir don't rest you know it's always one issue of, of of scandal another issue of infidelity and all this is because people jumped out of praying of the holy spirit you see a minister or you see a church worker who when you when you, as, when you move, get close to them you see that they sincerely love god you know they love god they love the things of god but you find them stealing you find them stealing in the house of god stealing in church this is because this set of people they love God, but they did not stay with the Holy Spirit. They did not stay for the transformation. They jumped out of the dealings of God. And that's the consequence of people that did not wait to God and get to know God experientially. You know, this is a message you want to listen to. It will build the foundation of your Christian experience. And I can say it and I can say it all again. When you have the right foundation, when your Christian journey at the right foundation, you are uh, it helps so much. It builds that conviction. No matter the wind, the storm that blows vehemently, you will still be standing on the rock because your foundation is laid on the rock. Your foundation is not laid on any other ideology. It's not laid on 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 science. It is not laid on mental gymnastics. Or your foundation and your anchor is the lead on Christ Jesus. So, so get this message, knowing God experientially. Get this message and it will bless you so. That is able to protect you and give you a wife and give you a husband. But this kind of army are not the ones who are going to tie God to a covenant. They are going to say, Lord, blessing or no blessing. They are the type who were sent to the vineyard without negotiation. They did not negotiate. When he called the people in the morning, they said, we will only work if you will pay us a denary. He said, you mean, if I don't pay you, you won't work. He said, no pay, no work. And he said, all right, you have tied a covenant with me, go. Later, he found some people sitting 
and he said, do you love me enough to walk in my vineyard? They said, yes. No arrangement, and they entered the vineyard. At the end of the day, even those who came willingly, but at the 11th hour, got the same reward with those who gave God conditions. And they were angry. And he said, am I not the Lord of the harvest? What did I do that was wrong? That Christianity that gives God conditions before your allegiance must be destroyed is witchcraft coming from the pit of hell. Are you listening to me? Job said, Though he slay me, yet will I praise him. Men and women who love God with their life, with their soul, with their all. Your passion is not motivated by any loss that you have hidden, waiting to be manifested. And you say, Lord, I love you and I believe your word, but I am more passionate than any other thing. I'm not just pursuing you. Listen, it's time the church body begins to define what is motivating their pursuit to God. Are you listening to me? Because that is what will determine how far we will continue in this journey. If you are pursuing God for money or fame or husband or wife, that means the day you get married, you have no need to pursue again. Are you listening to me? And so, our desire for, for God must come from an eternal plane that nothing in time will be able to quench that hunger. This becomes the platform on which authentic Christianity will spring from. To say, Lord, I love you and I'm committed. Whatever your agenda is, I am interested. I get troubled in my spirit seeing how many believers openly do not care about the agenda of God. The average church in Nigeria is only interested in fulfilling programs and holding conferences and conventions and we name all kinds of things. And we are happy. We are meticulous in planning. The ego of the, the man of God or the organizer is at stake. And every kind of artistry and accuracy comes into it. But the one whose agenda we should pursue, he is left. And the rulers are contending to be lords in the feast. Are you listening to me? And so spiritual growth is not just an act of knowing scripture is first coming to a point where you realize that you have no life of your own. Listen to me. That's not the end. That's the beginning. This is the reason why a spiritual man is he works so much in the presence of God. Because of all of these sacrifices that you have to subject yourself to. Thank you Jesus. And tonight... What is your motivation? Why are you pursuing God? Why are you running after the things of God? Is it with a passion that will expire when certain things come into your life? Or is it a genuine passion? You say, Lord, I thank you because you will give me a wife and a husband and a car and all of this. But I need you to know that I mean business with you. Are you just pursuing God because you are a student? And then you need him so that you can use him as a ladder towards academic success and the day you cry and you graduate you just wave him and say Lord there are many others who didn't backslide like me so you can concentrate on them lovest thou me more than this this was a question that he asked Peter because you know listen let me tell you something Peter is, a, is an interesting figure when Jesus was going to clean the feet of the disciples. Peter said, Ah, I respect you so much. I mean, come on, how can you clean my feet? Jesus said, You do not even know what I'm doing. And Peter said, Now just bath me. Now I understand. And he was the one who ran away and betrayed Jesus to the point that he called a little girl woman because he was trying to defend himself. Hallelujah. And when the hidden agenda that was in their heart. See, eventually, over time, the agenda in their heart for pursuing Jesus began to unravel. When the mother of James and John came to meet Jesus on behalf of her two sons, meaning they were already nursing it, that Jesus will conquer Caesar and now become the king of the Roman Empire. And then at that point, 
the disciples will become members of the covenant. So, while they were pursuing him, they were already setting their campaign strategies on ground. And they used their mother. And the mother will say, you know I'm a woman. What will you do to my children? Because I got disturbed at the speed with which they left fishing and started following Jesus. They didn't think about it. Jesus was a celebrity. Come and they say, of course, I've always wanted. And then later on, when they found out that this journey was getting too long, they started asking questions. First among themselves. This is why you see a preacher, 10 years, diligence in, in God. And then after a while, he just says, Lord, at least heaven knows I've tried. Because the motive that was behind the establishment of that ministry is beginning to be revealed. Hallelujah. Are you following me tonight? The light of God is searching our hearts to help us. This is how we grow in the spirit. And then at a particular time, they wanted to motivate themselves in the absence of Jesus. Because they did not understand what governmental authority is. They did not understand that you only receive results where you are sent. Jesus went with Peter, James and John and the remaining disciples gathered themselves around and they could not stand the ego and the embarrassment that the crowd around them they said look, why wait for Jesus? Can't we take initiatives on our own? And they brought somebody who was epileptic and they did not understand the order and the trainings in the spirit and how things are done. They began to assume the position so that in the absence of Jesus they might receive a temporary glory and console their loss before his arrival. And they were disappointed. Because they saw Jesus do it with ease. And they thought it would happen that same way. Here and there in the Bible, you will see men who pursued Jesus Christ for different reasons. People who wanted to buy anointing. So the, 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 the issue of buying anointing did not start from our generation. When they saw that by the laying on of hands, Men were receiving the Holy Ghost. How much? Let me give you. And the church of Christ has turned into a place of gullible men and women of God. Selling what they perceive to be the anointing. And we have a church that will not grow. Because the price for growth is unbearable. And so we rather prefer to, in, to, to mediate and use the prophetic and the apostolic. And whatever can stand to give us a momentary Sukkah. So if I need to find out whether it's the will of God for the job or not, I know that if I'm to follow the regular part of the Spirit, I may need to wait upon the Lord in praying and fasting for three days and I say, why waste my time? The third message on our list is the price for an extraordinary anointing. Now, if you've listened to this message, please drop it in the comment section. Share with us what you've learned in this message. And don't forget to subscribe, to like this video. You know, it helped the YouTube algorithm to push this video and make sure more people see it. The price for an extraordinary anointing. This message was preached in 2013 back in Zaria, the price for extraordinary anointing. This is a message you want to have, especially if you desire to live the extraordinary life. You, you are tired of the ordinary, you are tired of the common life. You know, this is the message you want to you want to have. In this message, I post to talk about the desire and passion for the extraordinary life. He talks about that don't settle for them. You need to desire greater measure of the Spirit of God. Don't settle for the common. You know, the, the life of a believer is an extraordinary life. And that is what we are created to. That's what we are born into. You know, don't settle for legs. Your passion for God is to seek the supernatural. Your passion for God is to seek at the unusual flow of the power of God. You need to you need to desire the higher dimension of the Holy Spirit. And and that's that hunger will drive us deeper to know God the more. And this is a message you want to get. This is a message you want to download. In this message I will talk about four price for an extraordinary anointing. The first one is consecration. Consecration. 
consecration consecration the the ability to set yourself apart to set yourself as a vessel unto god no consecration it says on itself it is painful to be different it is painful to be special you know when every other thing can do it but you said you can all of other people can do it but i can you know you understand the pattern you understand the desire you understand the culture of the holy spirit you get to understand the culture of heaven the culture of jesus and it gives you that consecration because the culture of heaven the culture of jesus the ways of the holy spirit is different from the other the ordinary man and when you begin to stand and align yourself to the will of the holy spirit when you begin to consecrate yourself out of the norms out of the common ways of of of, of this world of this babylon it it, you, it it sets you it sets you it sets you aside and it's painful to be different you know it's painful to be special you know and don't don't be too attached to comfort don't be too attached to comfort it's your it's a, it's, it's a price you need to pay the price for consecration you need to get this message i'm telling you you need to get this message the next price is the price of revelation I first talked about the ability for us to understand that we need to pay the price for revelation. We need to pay the price for light. You know, every challenge, every trouble around we see, it exists, it keeps in every trouble, every challenge cease to exist when revelation comes. So the price for revelation is very vital. The next one point is the price for total obedience. The price for total obedience. The apostle said, if you do what God did not start, you will do it yourself. So we need to you need to understand how to pay how to live out the total. We need to pay the price for total obedience. Understanding what God wants us to do and be at bent to make sure that we deliver it unto God. We, we obey everything the Lord has stated to the later. Then the last price is the price of consistency. In consistency lies the power. That is a quote from Mommy, Mommy Faith Uyedepo. She said, in consistency lies the power. I would say be careful of people's acceptance. Extra, extraordinary people are lonely people. Yeah, he talk about, he said we should be careful, be careful for people's acceptance. Extraordinary people are lonely people. Extraordinary people are not noise makers. You know, extraordinary people value their time. And instead of um, of, of taking out taking their time to run around making noise, you know, you know, you know, trying to to, to, to to be among, trying to feel among extraordinary people take those time for discovery. So you need to be careful of seeking or be careful of seeking people's acceptance and that's the message the price for extraordinary annoyance great means to set apart consecration requires absolute surrender joshua 3 verse 5 joshua 3 verse 5 If you want the Lord to do mighty things through your life, can we read it? One to read. And Joshua said unto the people, Sanctify yourselves. If you do that, what will happen? Tomorrow, the Lord will do wonders among you. You want to see wonders in your life? The first key is the price of consecration. Consecration requires absolute surrender. Everybody say absolute surrender. You will never have the extraordinary anointing when you have your own agenda. You just want to use God's anointing to do your own agenda. Uh -uh. When God calls you, his first assignment is to kill you. You die to yourself, to your ambitions. Listen, you do not know the degree of surrender that brings authentic power and anointing. How many of you remember that gentleman, Sadiq Ibrahim? Some of you will remember him. He was right here in Koinonia. This guy wanted to be, he was in a group called Highlanders in Port Harcourt. Very serious occultic group. And he wanted the power of invincibility. 
he wanted to be able to do great things. When he met the Habalist, the Habalist told him, you have to consecrate yourself. For three days and three nights, he was lying down in a graveyard. His eyes did not see any man. I'm telling you how the devil gives people power. Three days, he said in the night, he will see people come out of grace and move. And you were not supposed to shift. They will touch him. It's a, many of you do not know that the anointing comes with a price. That's why you see, when you talk against a man who is truly anointed, whether you are right or wrong, God will punish you. Are you listening to me? Absolute surrender. Consecration requires enduring the pain of being different. Oh, it's painful to be different. Let me tell you. It's painful to ride a different, a different plane of life. When everybody is going this way. When this is their definition of success. Moses was in the backside for 40 years. When his age mates were ruling in Egypt, he left the luxury of Egypt to prepare for an extraordinary ministry. Forty years! At the end of it, he came back to Egypt. He said, I'm ready. Oh, you can know you are ready. And it will not be pride. You can know you are ready. There is a time called the season of appearance. Are you, are you listening to me? Years ago, I hope I'll be able to share a few stories today about myself. Years ago, when I started preparing, when the Lord showed me the visions of the extraordinary things I'll be doing, in my mind I said, Lord, will people believe these things? And then the Lord began, sometimes the Lord will hold me in a room. Three days have not come out. My eyes have not seen the light. Three days. I would stay there just praying. Sometimes sleeping, I will wake up and I will lie down. And a mist, like a cloud, will literally come into the room by the shape of a man. A real mist, I'm not talking of some metaphysics hallucination. If you are seeing it, you are seeing it. If it's like it is not there, you are either seeing it. This is Sam. This is music director. Hallelujah. I had very strange experiences. And I knew that this was a preparation for an extraordinary ministry. Many of you, this is what has been happening to you. Hallelujah. But nobody has told you. They've not encouraged you to know. Are you, are you listening to me? Many of you, you don't even know. And you are not serious because you started joining people. You now want to run and go and start a church or a fellowship. You've not even done anything. Ella, you'll be my secretary. Matilda, you'll be the PA. You are the one who will bath me. You are the one who will dress me. You will be going to the restaurant for me. Say, God gave me a commission. He said, now my son, arise and raise me a generation. Sit down. He said, arise from his perspective. See, let me tell you something about the word of God. God speaks from the realm of eternity. Everybody say eternity. He speaks from the realm of eternity. There is no time. So when the word comes to you, it comes with such a strong urgency, you think you should get up and go immediately. You must sit down and find the time component of every prophecy. That's why when prophets heard from God, they said, according to the time of life. Are, are you following me? Thank you, Jesus. It's painful to stand out. Listen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's painful to stand out. It's painful to be unusual. It's painful to be controversial. If you are not ready, forget about an extraordinary anointing. These are strange and rare people. That's why many people cannot make it to that list. They are too conscious of themselves. You must die to yourself to carry an extraordinary anointing. They will talk about you. We are speaking about Satan and Jesus at the same time. Two extremes. No matter, you will have to be in between two of them. Different in your life. Different in your mindset. There are ways to do things in your house. Now you make up your mind and say, no way. 
these sacrifices and this idolatry and the rest, count me out. This is not going to be part of my life. I'm preparing for an extraordinary life. And people look at you. Say, so this thing has been there for how many years? Until the reward comes, you will look foolish. So let it not be strange to you. When you get to this realm, you will die to yourself. Literally. Everybody say the price of consecration. Many people do not like this. You know what? See, one of the biggest problems with the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, especially the American church, and now it's coming into Nigeria, we love comfort too much. Are you listening to me? The Holy Spirit is called the comforter. But listen, I need you to know that any sensible man knows that you don't get comfort from day one. When they give birth to a child, the first thing he receives is a slap. That's a sign to show that he's alive. Are you hearing me? Many people want pampering. We have built churches that want pampering. You say something that is striking. People say, we don't like this kind of preaching. No? We'll stop sowing into this ministry. And the man of God said, alright, we'll, we'll, we'll think of how to, to arrange it. May Koinonia never become the place that will water down truth because we are looking for money. Hallelujah. Everybody say the price of consecration. Before David was anointed, Psalm 89 said, I have found. Do you know what it means for God to find a man? The psalmist said, where can we hide from your presence? Yet God is saying, finally I have found you. Because many people just want comfort. We want to use the anointing of God to accomplish our own agenda. And so the first thing is you must die to yourself and die to your agenda. I was listening to Benny Hinn. He was talking to some youths. And he was telling them, he said, look, you people do not know the price that brought this level of anointing to my life. He said, I don't know the, name of, the names of footballers. I don't know the names of music artists. He said one time his son asked him to take him to a basketball place. He said when he got there and he saw people jumping, he could not understand what they were enjoying. The anointing will change you. It will make you strange. People say you didn't used to be like this. Where has your social life gone to? What happened? You will find it in the future. Give it up now. There are pastors who do visitation from Sunday to Sunday. Even Sunday morning, they quickly visit a rich man's house before they run to church. And then they believe that they are going to get an extraordinary ministry. And then many people now want methods. Young Gicho went to preach somewhere. He pastors one of the largest churches in the world. Hallelujah. And many Americans just sat out with their notepad. They believed he was going to give them 31 guaranteed methods. You know, this is what we like now. Do this. Add A to B to C. This will happen. Young Gicho came up. He doesn't speak English too well. Paraphrasing. He said, you people don't pray. You are not serious. You just sit down. You want the anointing. And he went and sat down. That was the end of his message. It was a prophetic rebuke. Authentic prophetic. Bible type prophetic rebuke. Hallelujah. That was the message. He who had an ear in that meeting should hear. Go back to the secret place. We like methods. Right now we read all kinds of psychological books. Unbelievers are writing books to govern church ministry. How to attract a crowd. 20 quick ways. Guaranteed. And many gullible men of God who are lazy just get up. You see them watching CDs. You would think it's something that will provoke them. A motivational speaker sits down. He says, when you come, start with a story. When you start with a story, use an example. When you do that, do this and that. You tried it, it didn't work because you are in Nigeria. Everybody say it. Nigeria. Nigerians have not been trained to tolerate nonsense. We are coming out from witchcraft. Straight. We are looking for something authentic. You don't come and tell people these jargons and junk. 
They will manage it for two days. They will laugh. We'll, we'll, when it gets bad, they will call you and say, Pastor, I sowed the seed. I prayed. It's not working. If you don't respond to me by next week, you will see me in your church again. Hallelujah. The price of consecration. Listen. Every great man knows that you must give up something to go up. Did you hear what I'm saying? You must give up something to go up. Politicians know this. By 1 a.m., you are sleeping. A politician is in a herbalist house just to get little political office. What has made the body of Christ so lazy? I said, the Lord said, I will die. Yeah. Obedience. It's difficult to obey when you are going to lose a lot. It's easy to obey when the obedience is on to gaining something immediate. Obedience. I choose to obey the word. I choose to live by his truth. Number four. There are many of you who have done these three. But the fourth key is what you have missed. The price of consistency. The price of consistency. The price of consistency. Look at me. Everybody. How many of you have seen someone cutting a tree? Do you know that if you keep hitting that tree, it looks like nothing is happening. There is one final hit that will cut the tree. That was not the strongest hit. It was the most consistent one. Are you listening to me? Many of us, listen, and let me tell you something. One of the greatest lessons, or yes, one of the greatest lessons that the Lord has taught me in this life is that it pays to wait upon the Lord. Impatience has cheated many people out of the blessings of God in this life. We are in a hurry for everything. Everybody say the price of consistency. Consistently doing the same thing. Regardless of the outcome. Regardless of the outcome. You tithe and you don't see the blessing. You say, I'm not stopping. I'm not stopping. I know that God is behind his word. Great people in life are those who have done certain things consistently. Galatians 6 verse 9. Do not be weary in well doing. He said, for we will reap in due season if we faint not. Do not be weary in well doing. He said, and let us not be weary in well doing. For in due season we shall reap. Everybody say, I will reap. Yeah. Some of you have been coming for koinonia again and again. Six months, things have not changed. Do not be wary. If it is what you are doing well, don't be wary. The Bible says you will reap because you are sowing. The only way the devil can kill your harvest is to stop you from sowing. The Bible says, He that sows unto the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. And he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal. In 1 Kings 18 from verse 30 to 46, we will not read it, just write it down. 1 Kings 18 Verse 30 to 46. The Bible says, Elijah prayed seven times. Everybody say seven times. If Elijah stopped at the sixth time, it would not work. He had to pray how many times? In fact, the Bible is so graphic. It says he prayed the first time. He sent the servant, go and check. The man said, nothing. Oh. Consistency. Is what separates ordinary people and extraordinary people. Consistency. Consistency. You pray no matter the outcome. You study the word no matter the outcome. Consistency. Many of us, when we are at the edge, you are at the verge of a breakthrough. That's when many of us give up. Hallelujah. In 2 Kings chapter 5, you read from verse 1 to 4, but let's just focus on verse 4. 2 Kings 5, the Bible says, 
the prophet had told Naaman, he said, if you want to be clean, go and dip yourself. How many times? Seven times. Naaman was complaining and grumbling. It didn't change him. The Bible says, ah, I thought they were protecting it. Hallelujah. Naaman dipped himself how many times? Don't worry, just do your work, media. Seven times. Do you know what it means to dip yourself? Many of you were baptized. They dip you only once. Imagine a great man. He entered the water. He entered and came out. He asked the slave girl, how many? She said, one. Do it again. He entered, came out. At the fourth time, he was already embarrassed. He was looking like mud. God said seven times, Mr. Man, consistency. Consistency. There are many of you, you are looking for a prophet to prophesy to you. Nobody comes. God says, just continue doing what you are doing. That's the only prophetic word you need. Keep doing it. Pastor Chris will say what? How, how does he say it? Keep speaking it. Don't stop saying it. Be consistent. Some of you start preparing for an extraordinary life. And impatience will just cancel it out. How, and you know, see, it's dangerous because when you start a journey, you get to a point where you are in the middle. You, it's too far for you to go back and then you can't reach there. Many of us start the journey and you go back. You are traveling to Abuja. You've now gotten to Abuja Kaduna Expressway. And you say, Kai, this journey is too far. I went to Meduguri on, on road. I slept and woke up I don't know how many times. I asked the driver how many more hours. He said six or seven. I said, what? We've been on this journey since. I had to sleep on the road. But did that mean we were missing the way? See, that you have to wait does not mean you made a wrong decision. Continue. John 6 verse 15. I mean, Joshua 6 verse 15. The crossing of Jericho. Joshua 6 verse 15. The Bible says, on that seventh day, you can imagine, to throw a big wall, God gave them an instruction. They went round once. The people in Jericho were wondering, who are these madmen? They had to die to themselves to know that whatever God tells you to do, it will work. On the seventh day, they now started going one, two, three, four, five. Madness. Six. At the seventh time, they blasted the trumpet. And the Bible tells us, see, the wall of Jericho did not fall down. It sank. Because the Bible says on the wall, five chariots could stand on it. So even if it falls, it will become another wall again. Sank. John 20, verse 11. When I was preparing these notes, I just put all these scriptures and the Holy Spirit told me, no, there's one more. My people must hear. John 20, verse 11. The Bible says, when Jesus resurrected, all the disciples came and the one Jesus loved checked the tomb and they saw that Jesus was not there. They checked once and they ran away. But the Bible says, Mary Magdalene stayed there. Everybody say consistency. And when she checked again, suddenly she saw an angel. Consistency. Consistency requires patience. It requires uncommon patience. It requires grace. Hallelujah. Many people in ministry, they start and then God is telling them just be consistent. Don't compromise. Don't compromise. Teach your message. It may not be popular, but don't compromise. If there, if, do you know that it's impatience and lack of consistency that makes people to derail from the things of God and get into witchcraft? They are looking for fast, fast fame, fast everything. They want a cheap fast. Fast cheap. One of the greatest revelations that God has put in me is the beauty of patience. I can wait. I've killed hurry from my life. I can wait. Some of you are in a hurry for everything. And this is your unbecoming. You are in a hurry to, you want 
digital hearing God now. Let you just say, thank you, Jesus. And God just begins to talk. Five minutes later, he has finished. You say, I give you praise. Unfortunately, his system is not like that. They that wait. Hallelujah. Very important. Consistency. These four things are the things that I practice in my own life every time. And I'm determined not to stop it. This last one is probably new to many people. You are just seeing the power of consistency. Consistency. When you want to build a house, the workers come every day. They put three blocks today. Tomorrow they come again. They add four blocks. I was checking the database of Koinonia. And I found out we are getting close to 5,000. The database, people who have been blessed, who have come to worship. I remember when we started it, 20 people, new people, 40 people, 20 people today, 100 people, 60 people, 400 people. Consistency. Everybody say consistency. I play a bit of keyboard. When I started, I was fairly consistent. And then I stopped being consistent. Do I like keyboard? Yes. Am I blessed by it? Yes. Can I play like I can? No. Why? You are not consistent. You see why many people are not consistent in God's presence. That's why they don't know when God speaks a thing. Consistency. Consistency. That's why we have a lot of people who are not stable with spiritual things. You run to this man of God today. Abuja or Lagos or wherever. You say, man of God, my life must change. He said, come and sit down under the word. Two weeks later, I said, man of God, it has not changed though. He said, just continue. He said, oh, let me find one that can give this thing to me sharp, sharp. Many of us have entered into all kinds of things. All kinds of things. Everybody say, I will, I will continue in the things that have started. Consistency. Let's do a quick review. Number one, the price of consecration. The price of consecration. Number two, the price of revelation. Consecration will kill you. You will take up the agenda of God and forget about your own agenda. There are some of you who finish service. You want to run and go for work. God will say, uh uh, for you, you are exempted. The normal law is to look for a job. You, you are exempted. You are a lady, you finished. You are just planning. Thank God I will get married. God will say, uh uh, you are going to marry in the next three years. Give me these three years of your life. Say, back to sender. I've always known. Enemy of progress. Now that is my breakthrough, it's my turn to shine. Consecration. You must die to yourself. You can't do everything. There are many of us, every program, secular or Christian, you are there. Something happens in TJ Palace, you come. You are happy. You just sit down there. Later, I say, Kai, it's time for fellowship. Let me run. And you, you wonder why your ears is as if they put cotton wool inside. You can't hear God. You always hear nonsense. Samuel had the voice of God because he was lying down close to the ark. If you lie down close to the ark, you will hear the voice of God. An extraordinary life. The next message we have is financial dominion. Financial dominion. This message was preached in 2014. Uh, back then in Zaria, 2014. And this message is is it's powerful it's a four-part series this message is a four-part series and i believe if you've not listened to any message from apostle Joshua salman get this message it's a four-part series financial dominion and all the series are loaded i'm telling you all the series are loaded life transforming messages those messages are hateless you know if you if you're still listening to it today it is fresh and the contents are heavy you know 
people have testified how that message have, have, have transformed transformed their life you know uh, the, 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 uh, the curriculum for the curriculum for the message is um, I will talk about the introduction concept of prosperity five areas of prosperity spiritual prosperity I will talk about five areas of prosperity anatomy of God's economic system the rule of wealth and prosperity spiritual of wealth and spirituality of wealth and abundance and wealth transfer in this in this message i post the the message is broken down into the concept of prosperity the five areas of prosperity anatomy of god's um, anatomy of god's economic system role of wealth and prosperity spirituality of wealth and abundance spirituality of wealth and abundance wealth transfer you want to listen to the message now a five areas of prosperity what are the five areas of prosperity i'm supposed to talk about in this message it's spiritual prosperity i'm supposed to talk about the spirituality of your prosperity you know if you listen to this message you will understand how uh, the, the 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 eldingness of your prosperity unfortunately that's what many people have traded away many people have traded away the prosperity of their of their spirit the of their spirit man for wealth many people have traded away for education many people have traded away for social acceptance you know and this is this is the core foundation of our being you know man is a tripartite being this is the core foundation of our being spiritual prosperity then we now have the mental prosper- prosperity mental prosperity he said intelligence is useful in kingdom advancement intelligence is useful in kingdom advancement the intelligence is useful in kingdom advancement so mental prosperity i will talk about bodily prosperity talking about the prosperity of our earth relational prosperity relational prosperity relation relational prosperity the the, uh, the, the the relationships around our life then he talks about financial prosperity so he, he said in this message that can you see that when they talk about financial domino it's not just about money now the five areas of prosperity financial prosperity is coming last because other forms of prosperity are more important than the financial in fact if you get those other forms of prosperity right definitely your finance will be right if you get your spiritual prosperity your mental prosperity you get your bodily prosperity and you have healthy relationships all this will trigger an effect in your finance yeah all this will trigger an effect in your finance uh, in this message i will talk about anatomy of god's economic system and the rule of wealth and prosperity you know you talk about the way transfer the way transfer and i still believe it today that this agenda is still alive in god's heart the wealth transfer god is still transferring wealth to the house of god transferring wealth to the people to the people of god um you know there's a message you want to download uh the keys um that uh for prosperity i will talk about being a problem solver being a problem solver being excellent in what you do and being valuable you want to listen to this message being valuable you want to listen to it but the door closes behind you stop begging it's a sign to go back build yourself and just stand you are a city on a hill the bible says you cannot be hidden there are ministers carrying complimentary cards all around i'm i'm a prophet if you invite me I promise you, you will see the hand of God in your ministry. My brother, if you find yourself marketing yourself, it's a sign you are not prepared. Proverbs 31, 31, and let her works speak for her at the gates. You don't speak for your works. Hallelujah. There are people with all kinds of complimentary cards. They have offices with AC. They have two or three screens. There's no value. There's no competence. They can't do anything. And this is the deceit you find around. 
Everybody just comes and says, okay, I am this, I am that. Very fine table. Nice jeep packed outside. There is nothing to offer. I'm challenging you right now. If you believe God is going to use your degree, and you believe that your degree is one of the tools you will use, what is wrong with stretching it to the extra mile? Go for your masters. Get a masters and be confident. So that they stop shutting the door at you. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. It's, it's my natural disposition. I dislike lazy people. If you are around me, it's impossible to be lazy. I will just send you away. People sleeping for hours without any work to account for why they are sleeping for that long. Hallelujah. Let me, I'm challenging you. Many youth in Nigeria are lazy. They are just hustlers. So it looks like they are hard working. Hustling is not the same as smart work. Hustling is just to be hitting left, right and center anywhere. I know one door will open. No, you don't make it that way. There is something you have. For somebody, somebody can say, this is the rod of God in my hands. And you're going to say, Lord, I will carry this rod. That's what people like Frank Edwards did. Is that true? They took this keyboard and the voice that God gave them. And they said, Lord, I'm taking it. And right now, look at comedians in Nigeria. 2.5 million. These guys go, these guys go to London and collect 30 pounds per seat. Nigerians, just to make you laugh. And now, you may think that they don't know what they are doing. They are not clowns. Try to make people laugh and see if it's easy for people to laugh. Do you know how frustrated you become when you give series of jokes and the people are looking at you? So don't think, you know, it's easy to look at them and feel these guys are just lousy boys, either because of their hair or this. You don't know what books they've read. And, and the way, this is, and I'm, I'm going to say this, if you are a gospel artist here, stand up. Gospel artist, if you are not sure, just quietly remain seated. I'm, I, I don't intend to embarrass you, but honestly, be confident. If you know you are a gospel artist, a worshiper, okay, whatever, stand up. I'm serious, I'm serious. Whether inside or outside, please stand up. Let me challenge you this night because you must prosper. You can hate me now, but you thank me tomorrow. Now, how many of you can show me three people, three people whose works mentor you and build you according to the area you see God taking you? Let me see your hands. Don't lie. Don't lie. Correct? Are you seeing now? This is a measure of your desire for competence. There is no reason why we should invite somebody from Koinonia here who will do what we are already doing. There is no reason. Hallelujah. I'm challenging you. Your voice, your gift can make room for you. You don't need to market yourself. You need no nonsense complimentary card. What you need is gift with proof that can deliver. Oedeko said the end of every argument is proof. Mukhtar is the person who, who dry cleans my, my, my suits and my shit. I've not, I've not had the desire. Even while he was serving, he comes to do it because he has done it so well. When people like you, they will give all kinds of excuses about you. No matter what people say about you, it's only a matter of time. It will pass and they will focus on what they have to get from you. Hallelujah. How many of you rehearse worshippers? I'm challenging you. How many of you get up in the morning? Some of you are music directors in your churches. You know that what you are producing in that church is nothing to write home about. But there's nothing to challenge you. See, if you live around local champions who clap for you, even when you are wrong, you will be broke in life. There are some of us that come, you sing nonsense, and somebody comes to tell you, wow, Jesus. And you are saying, really? Tell yourself the truth. I can get there, but I'm not there yet. 
don't see Sam and say we are colleagues. You are not colleagues. Make yourself a protege. This equality nonsense is killing the body of Christ. We are equal in Christ. We are not equal in value. Are you getting me now? So challenge yourself. This is what I tell the worship team all the time. Hallelujah. This is what I, I challenge the leaders. If there is nobody, there are some of us, we hate challenges. We want everybody telling you it's alright. In the school of prosperity, it does not work like that. The Bible says, provoke one another unto godliness. I'm challenging you. Some of you have beautiful voices potentially. You are sitting here and then there are some of you, you are already looking for exposure. You only rest on the seventh day. If you are trying to rest now, you are deceiving yourself. At my level right now, if I try to rest and I say I've gotten it in ministry, is the height of self-deception. I can't say that God has not tried for me, but there are heights. There are people who have gone ahead of us and they have shown us possibilities that exist in Christ. And we must press. I don't hang around psychophants. I hate liars. I'm not saying don't be around people who bless you and encourage you. But I am teaching you there is a way you can tame poverty. Competence. Everybody say competence. Please sit down. God bless you. Those of you who believe God is calling you to be entrepreneurs. I don't just mean you like business. You really believe there is an aspect of your life like that. Stand up. Let's see them. I assume that you are standing up intentionally without any kind of coercion. You know what you are doing. Let me challenge. I really want to challenge you tonight because I love you. Listen. If you cannot show me two to three people at least whose books, whose lives, whose videos are mentoring you and building you. I'm telling you straight to the point. You are not following the right path. Are you getting my point now? Who is challenging you? Who is challenging you? You want to become a public speaker. You can't speak well. It has not been a source of concern. You are saying it does not matter. That's the rod of God on your hand. Does it take 10 years to learn English? Can't you go and subscribe for extramoral English? See, this is the problem. Many people think if you do not humble yourself, you will die of poverty. There are times you need to go and learn. Please don't feel offended. I'm not just lashing you out of hatred. I love you from the depths of my heart. I hope you understand. I just want to, I want to provoke you to know that there is a way to the top. And that that thing does not come by dash. We've spoken about the spiritual laws. But brothers and sisters, you can be so competent. You can be the very best. People pack auditoriums. When people like Zig Ziglar are going to speak, they pay hundreds of thousands of dollars. Nigeria brought Les Brown. And they paid so much money to hear a man come and speak for two hours. What is it about talking? Hallelujah. Please sit down. Show me the project you are currently doing in your life. Show me the book where you are currently writing something you are working on. And I know that you are already on your way out of poverty. I don't care if you are taking Gary right now. But show me the flamboyancy you are doing. Fine lady, handsome guy. And I show you a big deceit that will cost you so much in life. There are many people claiming what they are not. Listen, brothers and sisters, this is the school of prosperity. It's time to settle down. The minimum standard in the world today is excellence. That's the minimum standard. Whether spiritually or otherwise. That's why we pray. By the grace of God, we have a robust prayer team. And everybody has that spirit of excellence. But there are things I do every day. And where I don't, I cannot do it, I always try to catch up and make up. My spiritual life. I build myself in leadership. I build myself in entrepreneurship. You must build yourself in these areas. Challenge yourself tonight. 
I will be competent. I receive grace. This is your exit out of your present state. God is speaking to someone tonight. This is your exit out of your present state. If you've been suffering complex and inferiority, if you're always feeling offended when you see others, it's because you have not seen the rod of God in your hands. There is something you can hold that can part the Red Sea for you. Let me tell you something. There is something. You do not go and stand before the Red Sea without nothing. What do you have that can part that river for you? Hallelujah. The value of a man makes room for him. I read a book years ago by John Mason called The Enemy, called Average. And I challenged myself that I was never going to live an average life. Please listen to me. This could be an understanding that will exit you out of poverty forever. I call it intentional prosperity. Prosperity that you entered intentionally. You know what you did that brought you. It was not magic. When it comes to prosperity, it's not just about miracles. It's about principles that can be reproduced again and again and again. This becomes the basis of your confidence. Is God changing somebody tonight? The place is quiet tonight. God is speaking to somebody. Hallelujah. Write this word down, please. In your journey to prosperity, there are three major things you will need to develop aside from all of these things. Number one, or three levels of knowledge. You must acquire what I call financial intelligence. Part of what I'm giving you is financial intelligence. Please write financial intelligence. Number two, you need financial planning. Intelligence is good, but it's not enough. Financial planning. Number three, you need financial discipline. Today I'm going to announce a few books. I've read a lot of books. But there are a few that I truly believe. You don't need to read everything. But there are a few books that can help you. What is financial intelligence? The sum total of all the knowledge and information you will need that helps you understand how money works. The sum total of all the knowledge and information you will need that helps you understand how money works is called financial intelligence. You need financial intelligence. The educational system in Nigeria does not have a structure that provides adequate financial intelligence. For instance, I redefined money for you. I told you a number of things, how that money responds to value. All of these informations culminate in what we call financial intelligence. Hallelujah. Financial intelligence also helps you to develop what we call in business an investor mentality, not a consumer mentality. Financial intelligence. Many Christians in the body of Christ have money, but they do not have financial intelligence. They don't know how money works. There are many churches. The fifth message on our list is your light is come. Your light is come. Wow, wow, wow. This message is life transforming. Personally, I've listened to this message more than 20 times. It's such a powerful and phenomenal message. Your life is come. This message was ministered in 2016. You know, the apostle says, Stop the excuses. Seek light. You know, when people give excuses for phenomenon they can't, they don't understand happening in their life, and people seek to give excuses about about what is holding them back people seek to give excuses about why they've not progressed in life opposed to say it says stop with the excuses stop the excuses seek light when light comes darkness disappears when light comes when light comes growth happens 
when light comes there is clarity in what you want what you are doing so seek the light the entrance of the world gives light the entrance of god gives light there is a way out of everything there is a way out of everything what you need is light there is a way out of everything what you need is light and this is a powerful message you know after this particular message of them i go through my notes again and again and again and again and again if you truly understand the potency of of this message it will drive you into a strange realm of study you will cherish your study time you prioritize your study time above any other thing because it is through the word of god that we have access to this light it is through the words of god that we have the entrance of the world it is the entrance of the word of god that brings light and you see automatically all those things that looks impossible all those mental um, mental clogness all, all those all those inefficiency in our life disappear all those limitation barriers get shattered when there is light light flashing down through us you want to download this message you know and this may have to talk about the dimen- discernment of the body of christ yes in this we talk about the discernment of the body of christ that when you appreciate the body when you appreciate graces that people carry when you appreciate the anointing that god has placed over his people it is a source of light it is a source of light it is a source of light you know um and you need to understand that all men are not equal i will talk about this he said all men are not equal all men are not equal so you need to get this message this is a very powerful your light is come your light until it tells you the processes that led to that thing, that encounter. I want you to be tired of lack of results in your life. We don't serve God for results, but you are frustrated when there is no result in your life, in every area of your life. So what gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Many people have said I will not die and they died. So Think quietly. What gives you confidence that you are not going to die? Bold face does nothing to Satan. I will die. What gives you confidence that you will remain in hell? Oh, by his stripes I am healed. You ask how many people keep quoting this thing as they keep coughing out blood till they die. I'm, I'm challenging you. Is God speaking to us? What gives you confidence, brothers and sisters, that you will get up and travel and come back safe? The Bible never hid it from us that there are arrows that fly by day. It never said they flew once, they won't fly. They are constantly flying, even now. The Bible calls certain things a noisome pestilence. Right? It said not the destruction that wasted by noonday. It tells you a thousand shall fall. So there are so many people falling. Brothers and sisters, it's time for us to probe whether what we have is true light or just shadows of realities. What gives you a guarantee that you are going to get a job? Did you know that two, for instance, out of every maybe 10 or 20 graduates get jobs within their first five years of graduation. There are many first class students, 2-1 two students, 2-2 two two students from prestigious universities who are still waiting, joining the queue. Even if they give 1,000 jobs in a parastatal, there are other people who even have other advantages. They have uncles and aunties. You, you don't have anybody. So, by default, you are disadvantaged. What gives you an edge? What makes you think you are going to rise? Is God speaking to us tonight? Illumination. There are many pastors who give excuses 
oh our church is not growing because the location is not is not very the, the, the location is, is in a wilderness is that true is that true look what is happening to many families we are victims of the arsenals of darkness anybody can die anyhow any day anything can happen to anybody anyhow any day But he says, you will arise and shine. Oh, I respect the word of God. I not only believe it, I respect it. I've found my way. My only confidence in life is on the strength. God took his integrity and put it to be released only when the word is understood. Listen, what you don't understand is the same thing as not having it. If I have... Can you help me with this camera? I, I won't touch it. Just show me where I shouldn't touch. Where oh, I shouldn't touch here. Alright, can I hold this here? Is it okay? Look at this. This is a wonderful gadget. Are we together? Please, Pastor Femi, come. Come, just stand by my side. This is a camera. Is that true? He doesn't have any. Now, if I say who is better, I know you will say me. Because I'm holding one. I'm, I'm showing you cameras all around. And then you ask me, show me the pictures. And I say, look, forget about pictures. I have a camera. Are you not seeing it? No, no, no. Listen, listen. The goal of this camera is to snap pictures you can see. And I've been holding this camera for a long time. I'm even laughing at this guy. And say, you are standing no camera. We'll see where the pictures will come from. And you are holding this. There are no pictures. Are you seeing that? Who is truly better? I think it's this guy. Because he's in a point where he even knows he does not have. So his breakthrough can be faster. You, you think you have. If someone else comes with camera too, you say we are colleagues. Because you are holding camera. You see what deceives a lot of people. Uh, the moment they share a man of God, they say we are also we are fellow pastors in this vineyard. We know what we are doing. And they will never sit down to learn. The woman with the issue of blood said, Look, I, I know I have a problem. I'm not guessing. But the scribes will come for Jesus' meetings. They will come as contemporaries. When he's speaking, they'll be nodding. He knows the law. And they remain there in darkness. And there were other sinners who would come and receive. This is the problem with the church. We think because we have scriptures. The moment I say Isaiah 6, he say, Oh, arise, shine. That's where he's going. But has it produced results? Has it produced results? This gentleman is holding a camera. Do you know his camera can even be better than this one? Yet it's not producing results. No understanding. Let me tell you, lack of understanding is as bad as ignorance. You can have knowledge and it can be wasteful if there is no understanding. Yeah. Thank you. The more I know God, the more I see how predictable this life can be. Listen, the more I know the ways of God, the more I see how predictable a man's destiny can be. As scattered and haphazard as it looks, there is a spiritual rhythm. Light can show you the path. It says, thy word, O Lord, is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. I'd like you to shout it after me. I'm tired of confusion in my life. Say, I'm tired of guessing in my life. That you are faced with challenges. And then you say, I think this is the key. You now try it. It doesn't work. You now go back. Do you know that certain challenges cannot give you a long time to keep guessing? If you don't get it once, it can destroy you. There is somebody out to destroy you in your village. And that person's destruction is only at the mercy of what you know that can bail you out. Your ignorance, if you allow it too long, you may be caught up in that tragedy. Are we together? This is what I tell myself all the time. Joshua Selman, you must get rid of ignorance and confusion in your life. And the key 
is the word of God. Listen, listen, listen. No other, no other instrument can give you true light outside the word of God. Make no mistakes about it. I've read a lot of books. I've read psychology books. I've read business books. I've read all kinds of things. Any principle or thought that is not consistent with the word of God is going to add to your confusion and ultimately waste your life. Because there are people who are trying to get enlightenment outside the world. The Bible calls their light darkness. Are we together now? I, I see a lot of people teach and talk and is even stepping into the church. Whenever we are teaching certain things, especially about success, we, we push the word of God out and we say, just leave Bible, this one, we are now talking common sense. Anything outside the word of God is going to confuse your life. What is contained in this word? Mysteries. Mysteries. Keys. Kabbalah Tayala. Keys that open doors. These are ancient keys, brothers and sisters. Those, see, there is no door in your life that has not been opened by somebody before. The Bible lists them in Hebrews chapter 11. Men who had these keys and did so many great things. Knowledge. Say it again, I'm tired of guessing, I'm tired of guessing, I'm tired of guessing. We are guessing over our finances. We are guessing over ministry. We are guessing over the anointing. I think I'm anointed. No, you are not. If you are anointed, there should be an evidence. If there is no evidence, you are not. Calm down and look for the keys. Hallelujah. If what happened to you last year remains with you this year, then it's your fault. We must contend for light. Everybody said there is a light that can deliver me. Everybody said there is a key that can open that door. Brothers and sisters, there is no door that is made without a key. But every door is at the mercy of the key. He said, I have given, to, it's been given to you to know the mysteries. The mysteries of the kingdom. What keeps you in divine health? Look at sicknesses flying all around. You enter a restaurant, you don't even know where they got the water from. And you are eating and you are happy and you are running around and you want to live long right now there are all kinds of documentaries that almost call everything bad i saw one that said microwave causes cancer for god's sake me that has to microwave food almost every day so that means i'm going to die young what do you understand by the life of god when the bible says great is the mystery of godliness that God can dwell in a man. Have you caught the, the, the revelation of that truth? That God can dwell in a man. That God can dwell in a man. Let's take our finances for instance. At least this concerns us. What do you know about your finances? Or are you hoping that one day you will be blessed? That's a costly hope. Sister, do you have any shorty that a man is going to come and carry you? Believe me, if all you have is that I'm fine or I'm in a place where there are gentlemen, you are joking. See, let me tell you something. Knowledge truly kills fear. Uh, stand up, Pastor Femi. Stand up, promise. Watch these guys. Please sit down. Sit down. Were you afraid of sitting? Did you turn back to even check? You know why? Because they are sitting based on an enlightenment. They know what this chair can do. Are we together now? They know that this chair can take their weight. They are not thinking about it. I'm not holding this mic wondering if it will shock me. I don't expect it to. Are we together now? I'm not holding this, trusting it to scatter. No, 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 no. This guy is not playing this keyboard hoping that the sound will just stop. He knows it should continue because he's playing it with knowledge. I gave an example last year, I think when I was teaching. I don't know if he was here or another meeting. 
If I call somebody who cannot play this keyboard and I say, sit down. Look how wonderful what he's playing is. Are we together now? That person who doesn't know how to play keyboard. Cameraman, come. Uh, do you know how to play keyboard? Don't waste our time. Come. All right, Mike, please stand up quickly. Just do whatever you think you know to do. Quickly. One minute. Now, let's see. Look at me. How many of you know that this keyboard is absolutely obedient? It will produce any sound. Now, play anything. Go ahead. You may be making sense. Go ahead. All right, watch this. Now, this guy thinks the problem is the keyboard. Are we together now? Because he doesn't believe anything is wrong with him. Ah, why are these kids not doing, why are they not playing like this? The problem is never the keyboard. The keyboard was designed to be played, but it has rules. There is a rhythm. You see the keys, black, white, everything scattered. All right? Okay, thank you, thank you. <laughs> Go and do your job. <laughs> All right, so Mike, play. please play something. Same keyboard. Same church, same ministry, same business, same academics, same Nigeria. Play, go ahead. Anything. Same keyboard. That guy said his government. That guy said it's, it's, it's Nigeria that is not giving job. That guy says machines that cause cancer. I mean, look at this. Listen, the Bible. Now, watch this. When everybody is in a pool of ignorance and one person stands out, what do you think will happen? The world was designed to not ignore spectacular things. It's impossible for a thing to be spectacular and not draw attention. Are we together now? Is your life spectacular enough to draw everyone, including your destiny helpers? Those who can say, look, Benga, come and take five plots of land. I just want you to be around me because there is a testimony that you carry something that is notable. My goodness. Life will become so cheap for you when you pay the price to carry life. You see, access to illumination is truly a sign of God's love because not everyone, listen, not everyone will have the opportunity to go to school. Not everyone will have the opportunity to learn English. Not everyone will have the opportunity to be born by rich parents. But everybody can have access to illumination. And brothers and sisters, when you find it, it will change your life forever. I kept thinking about this really. And I was telling myself, oh God, can you make the lives of your people so predictable? Absolutely predictable. Absolutely predictable. See, one of, the, one of the indices for measuring favor is, is um, the Bible calls it, it says you will be a delightsome land. People like to be around you because they have a track record that something happens to them every time they are close to you. I like getting close to the ma welfare mama. The sixth message on our list is... Hmm, the mystery of deliverance. I'm sure many E and I, I'm sure the I'm sure the Quinona Global family would have would have commented if this message is not added to this list. The mystery of deliverance is a four part series, and this is a message you really really want to get. You really really want to get. It's a four part series. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to go into the personal encounters I have with this message. But I remember clearly the year in 2018 when this message was ministered. That week, um, there were great testimonies. And that week, those four weeks was really a tough one. Because uh, um, I remember Apostle encouraged us to fast for those weeks. And while we were fasting, Praying, yeah, and he called us to fast and pray in the midnight. While we were fasting and praying, people were coming out with different testimony, and some people were talking about um re, uh, about about um about reactions. Re um, people were talking about reactions against what reaction against what they were doing. You know, things were happening, strange things were happening in people's life. That I want to get them not to listen to this message. 
They want to get them not to they want to get them not to be able to pray and fast. You know, because this message is so powerful, you want to listen to it. The mystery of deliverance. I will talk about the covenant system of authorization that enables God or demons to operate. They say covenant is a system of authorization that enables God or demons to operate. Covenant is a system of authorization that enables God or demons to operate. You know, in this message, I'm going to talk about the the the, the hazardness in people's life, things that happen in people's life. Um, the 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 the, the reason he talks about what could the 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 mere cause of the reason for pain and 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 pain and regrets that many people have their life suffering and bondages in people's life. He said he, he, he talk about the reason and so so all these are tied to authorized spirit, uh, all these are tied to spiritual spiritual oppressions in people's life either from foundation whether by ignorance that come through ignorance that come through foundation in the foundation of family lineage you know or through blood you know it talks about this this message is deep is a message is a knowledge you really really want to have he said the realm of the spirit is a legal realm you know where things happen legally you know ignorance is an advantage to satan ignorance is an advantage to the devil ignorance is an advantage to the devil we have to talk about strong old strong old strong old that binds people and old people down you know if we are beginning to talk deep about this message it will take us hours to exhaust the mystery of deliverance it's a message you want to download and you want to listen to the final message on our list, the seventh. Even if he was cursing God from the room, the same stiff necked people that cursed God later on were in that room, but because there was a covering of the blood. So every time we engage the blood, many believers don't know how to engage the blood to engage the blood is not just to shout i plead the blood i plead the blood i plead the blood alone are we together it looks like it's drizzling or rain also please if it is just let the people find a way of stationing them around we're, we're about to pray so we'll find a way of making it happen are we together now everybody say the blood so the first mystery that brings deliverance is the blood. When I had this revelation, I began to pray. And let me tell you, that was when I found the mystery of Psalm 51. They gave me that scripture. Psalm 51 was something that I forgot about that scripture many years. It was this year that God reminded me again. Psalm 51. Please give it to us. Our time is gone. Let's see how we can do justice. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgression too. Let's just run it. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Three, for I acknowledge my transgression and my sin is ever before me. Four, against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Listen, let me tell you. You can carry your family and in covenant stand as you make. This is not just about one man. It can be one business. It can be one family. It can be one church. Many believers will not believe this. That thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Verse 5. You can read it down, down, down. Behold, I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me. And you read this scripture and cry the mercy of God. Listen to me. Nineveh was a land that was so depraved. When God sent Jonah, Jonah said, God, I'm not going. He said, I know you. I know you. I want to allow this thing remain so that you will be angry and curse these people. I know that if I talk to them, you are merciful. They will now repent and you will act as if they didn't do anything that warranted punishment. 
and he ran away. He ran away for a justifiable reason. There was something about God that he knew. The Lord is gracious and compassionate. The Bible says he is slow to anger. So if my father or my mother went to sacrifice a baby and drain the blood to send me to school, and now there is a spirit that stands on legal ground, I can stand before God and knock on the door of mercy and say, Lord, I know that the soul that sins, it shall die. But do men die twice? Is it not appointed one for man to die? And after that, the judgment. And Lord, your son has died. And what judgment? No one condemns you if you are in Christ. And you stand on that legal ground. And God says, done. Done. It may have been 30 years, but done. Lord, I went to a harbourist myself because I was looking for a wife or husband. Lord, I went by myself. I wanted to pass exams. I went to Zaria City. I went and did this and that. Lord, I know that I did all of this. And you stand before him. And then the blood speaks. Every time the father sees the blood, Satan sees judgment. Every time you point the blood. To plead the blood does not mean to chorus it like a charm. To plead the blood means to bring to remembrance. It's not just saying, I plead the blood. To plead the blood is a revelation. Bring to the Father's remembrance the substitutionary work of Christ. And that the blood, the sinless blood of his eternal son that was given in exchange for my deliverance. Mm. That's the first thing I did. And that's the first thing anyone must do. If all you keep doing is in the name of Jesus, I'm free, you're in trouble. Pleading the blood entails a broken and a contrite heart. You see, let me tell you, there is a level of repentance that brings the hand of God to a man. It's not this arrogant, I plead the blood, Lord, just get up and break 250 years yoke of killing people in my, in my village in the name of Jesus. After all, you died. No. A broken, there is an attitude that makes the blood effectual. Are we together? The fact that the Bible says we should come boldly does not mean it says we should come arrogantly. Lord, I stand before you and I know that on my own I will never be able to make it. I watch my mother cheat people. I watch my father cheat people. I watch my siblings cheat people. Somebody lost a job because of his wickedness. It is true that as a family we deserve this. But Lord, I stand on behalf of my family. If my people, which are called by my name, although they are called by my name, it is not automatic. They must humble themselves and pray. And seek my face and turn from their evil ways. Then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and heal their land. And I said, Lord, it's a deal. And I cried. I would never forget that night. Lord, let your grace and your mercy speak for me. My grandfather served you until he died. Even on his deathbed, he died for Jesus. In your anger, remember mercy. Lord, if you leave me the way I am, I will never make it in life. Lord, can the dead praise you? Let me show you how people touch the heart of God. Lord, if you take my life now and you allow witchcraft to kill me, like it killed everybody in my family, can the dead praise you? Lord, if I give birth to children out of witchcraft, you are presenting your strong reasons. Lord, is it not you that has said you are a merciful God? I stand before you without argument. And God arises from heaven. Many believers do not know how to touch the mercy of God. It was the psalmist that would write everything he did on behalf of Israel. And say they should make a poem out of it. Let us with a glad soul mind praise the Lord. He said for his mercy is endure. He's ever faithful. He's ever sure. He will even say Sila. Think about it. I didn't go to God with a bold face as a man of God. To say, God, let me tell you something. My grandfather was a pastor. I love you. I, 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 I don't drink beer. I stand before you in my self-righteousness. Is that pride that kills people? Someone must go down on his knees and say, Lord, 
a cause causeless shall not stand. There is a reason why we are failing in this family. There is a reason why doors are not opening in this family. And Lord, I stand before you. Who else will I run to, oh God? Will you let men see? Be like the saints of old. They knew how to talk to God. Lord, will the living, will the dead praise you? If you pay me, if you do this, do you want them to say you brought people out of Egypt but could not take them to the promised land? And the Bible said God repented. Have you heard that? He said, come, let us reason together. That tonight someone can say, God, will the unrighteous and the righteous receive the same reward? What then is the value of your blood? And you will think you are joking and God is listening to you. Lord, is it a crime that I came from the north? Must I fail the failure? Is it a crime that I'm an Igbo man? Must I fail that failure? Is it a crime? I came from a Muslim background. Now I'm born again. It is true that I went to all kinds of Alpha and the rest. But Lord, will I receive the recompense of sinners? Bring before him your strong reason. And cry for his mercy. I did that. You appropriate the mercy of God in your life. Number two. In complete deliverance, you cannot downplay the power of words. Write it down. The power of words. Your words are a vital tool in establishing the victory of Christ over your life and situation. Matthew chapter 22. And verse 37. Please let's hurry up. I already sense fire burning in this place. We'll do this thing very fast and we'll pray. Mm. Matthew chapter 12, verse 37. Jesus said unto him, Matthew 20, chapter 12, 12, verse 37. Matthew 12, verse 37. For by thy words, Thou shalt be justified. I will tell you what words. It's not any words. And by thy words, thou shalt be condemned. You know what the words are? Let the redeemed of the Lord do what? Let those who have become benefactors of his blood make that announcement in the realm of the spirit that Satan you heard my conversation with the king of glory. And it is unto him I have sinned. And he has decided to show me mercy. Therefore I decree and declare. That in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I declare that I am free from all of these chains. The Bible says declare ye. It looks simple. We make declarations without appropriating the blood and the mercy of God. When it has to do with deliverance. The blood opens the door. And then your words, you sound that word to principalities and powers. Words. There's a reason why there was an echo. It is finished. Jesus didn't have to say it. He said it for a reason. And the curtain of the temple was torn from top to bottom. There is a new and living way that we can step in. I remember the Lord asking me to speak and say, son, Begin to speak and denounce yourself from every walk of darkness. And I began to pray. I have obtained mercy. I blot myself out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against me. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I obtained forgiveness. I have been called out of every tongue. I thought it was a joke until my life began to change in a entire theology to its foundation. A man of God delivering people, praying for them, ministering under the power of God. Now I come in contact with another man of God and I wake up five minutes later, having littered the place, sweating around. What happened? What is the mystery behind the challenge in our families? That we gather together and pray to the God of heaven. Oh Lord, attend to us. And while we are praying, the matter is going from bad to worse. Then we sow a seed. Then we do this and that. What, what is the explanation behind the patterns in families? 
they look like coincidences but no matter how long it seems to catch up with people there are families listen carefully please listen with an open heart there are families you will never get married first until you have a child out of wedlock no matter how careful you are it has nothing to do with being bad or being evil some of them are pastors some of them are leaders what of poverty there are cities you enter and you find out that things go bad there are cities when you enter you will become broke immediately not more than one month no matter how hard working you are you enter those cities just stay for a little time except you sustain an intelligence higher you can be earning one million per month after 10 years you will still stay in a rented house it's not the occurrence of men there are deeper mysteries than our eyes can see there are other cities no matter how careless you are you can enter within a short time and you will anything even if it's selling salt it will prosper you to the point that those who are prosperous cannot exactly tell you what they are doing there are men of god that leave certain cities and go to certain cities and it's as if they are no longer anointed everything scatters and they wonder what happened god boy you sent me here there are families when you get to a particular age range it's like an equation is activated in the spirit something starts happening patterns of sicknesses patterns of failure we have pretended they don't exist we have attempted to shut our mouths and say don't worry you just keep believing things will happen you approach life like that you are going to be frustrated are we together the same way there are people who are born and a small child of two years is already seeing visions daddy i saw this mommy i saw this that child has not had the opportunity to give his life to christ yet the father sees the mother sees the sister see even the drunkard brother sees visions and not even the drunkenness took away the vision he can be in a beer parlor and see an accident happening somewhere and say it like that yet you are here fasting lord open my eyes after 40 days dry the only thing you see is a spirit that comes to oppress you something is wrong how about people going to bed in the night and a spirit appears and sleeps to, with them it's happening to many of you it's just that people have been trained to keep quiet how will i say this embarrassment you get up knowing that something has happened to you. Someone wants to bless you. You go back in the night to sleep and something happens. Whether it's an animal, whether a human being. It was here in Koinonia. Someone was injected in a dream with HIV. And he got up physically with HIV from a dream. The same way Solomon received an understanding heart from a dream. And woke up physically with it. People had seen themselves dying in dreams and they kept laughing and two weeks later truly they died what is this mystery that surrounds us every day can't someone give us intelligence enough not to create fear but to help us understand what is this whole thing mother was raped a young lady raped now you have daughters and somebody it makes a house help to have to come and rape the small girl and you look and say no all these people were not connected something seemed to have connected them from the realm of the spirit how about students who are about to write final paper last exam last everything all of a sudden they find a piece of paper on the ground and say stand up you you have done malpractice and because of that they just drive them away do you think it's natural does it look natural to you how about those who receive salary listen carefully many well-meaning hard-working civil servants there are many people who were trained in our own houses and they are the ones feeding our parents till today they came as children they were trained in the same house they got up prospered and built houses and they are still bringing welfare and giving people there are many of us you enter a street and the way it was when you were 10 years is still the way it is now try to build a house there and watch what happens something is wrong 
someone has got to explain to us what is this, this mystery around our lives there are families where all the men die mysteriously sometimes in a two two year cycle a three three year cycle a man can be sitting in his house quietly do you think all these spray bullets that happen in america that somebody just stands and just shoots and shoots some people don't you ever they they have to create an explanation oh this was emotionally imbalanced it's a lie it's a lie spray bullets just do everything and kill five of your family members alone and the thieves go for no reason there is an explanation my assignment this month is to open your eyes some of you will call your loved ones and say daddy we need to meet as a family this is it are we together my father is the only one alive of all his brothers I knew that my father would have died since. Nobody. I don't know who is the most prosperous person from my paternal lineage. With all humility, I think it may be me. Can you imagine that? They are not lazy. A, a whole lineage and the most educated person just finished secondary school. No matter how hard working. You've seen them bring people here. There was a time a mother brought a, a dear lady here. 500 level medicine. She started developing signs of bipolar. And now the girl just went mad. Let that lady leave. 10 years later when her life is almost useless. The madness will go by itself. Brothers and sisters. If we don't wake up. The devil is going to destroy us. Hear what I'm telling you. There are ladies. Message. Um, on our list, don't forget we are talking about seven most impactful messages by Apostle Joseph Sama. The seventh one, I believe everyone should know it. You can drop it in the comment section. Everyone should know that this has to be part of this message. If we've not talked about it, it has to be the seventh one, which is this grace core favor. This grace core favor. Ah, this message is life changing. Um, this message is life changing. This grace called fever. I've listened to testimonies of people how is this message that transformed them. Uh, a friend of mine told me that he has listened to this message more than 100 times. This grace called fever. This is a message you want to put or repeat. I mean, if you're not listening to it, this grace called fever of Apostle Server, you can pause this video now, go and download it, and put it on repeat so life transforming message he said man is limited not because he is good or bad but because he's a man yes he said man is limited not because he's good or bad but because he's a man god has created system of advantages it's called speed you know because of the limitation in of of man because of some of the some of the trials that comes to men you know, sometimes it may, might look as if people are being delayed and people are being drawn back or laid back. So God has created systems of advantage to help men to redeem time. For example, a woman who has not been able to have children for years, you know, when this woman steps into favor, a woman who has been delayed for 10 years that have not had children, you see that when favor steps in, you see that that woman can give birth to two or give birth to three at once. What happened? God have compressed time by one effect of favor. So this, this <laughs> so this is a message you you want to get. This is a message you want to get. He said he talk. He now talks about the definition of favor. He he talk. He debunked the the the, the he debunked the definition that says that favor is an unmerited access. Favor is anointed as I said, no, that favor is actually merited. Favor is actually merited. He said the dimension of favor that is not merited is salvation. The rest, he said, they are actually merited. That there are formulas, they are laid down formulas that bring favor. You know, he said favor is a divine help, divine assistance. Favor is a divine help or divine assistance. Favor is a divine help 
or divine assistant assistant and he give the keys of favor one of the, there are five keys that i'm supposed to talk up in this man i'm supposed to talk about five keys that control favor the first one he said honor honor control favor one man can be used by god to open a hundred doors of opportunity to you one man can be used by god to open a hundred doors of opportunity to you honor honor ah you know this this uh, this is a message you need to listen to yourself honor is if i'm on the five keys that control favor i'm supposed to talk about value about honor he said all men are not equal you know all men are not equal and you should be able to understanding of favor is concerned and that is largely the reason why many believers have not been able to step into the experience of favor the definition itself for most of you if i ask you please define for me favor what you will usually say is favor is unmerited access is that true you are not wrong but you are largely incomplete favor is a grace that is multidimensional. You see, unmerited access is just one of the definitions of favor. And the very fact that you believe that favor is unmerited is the reason why we may never receive it. When you tell believers favor is merited, they say, no, 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 no. Favor is not merited. And because we have an idea that favor is unmerited we feel there is nothing to study about the dynamics of the operation of favor if something is unmerited why should i go so far to study it let me tell you by the authority of god's word favor is merited favor is multi-dimensional in its operation and it's just one dimension of favor that appears to look like unmerited favor or unmerited access that is when it has to do with salvation the substitutionary sacrifice of christ any other dimension of favor is merited to just believe that favor is unmerited looks like a very sincere communication but is destructive many believers have been unable to step into it you cannot call wisdom unmerited people know that wisdom is merited so they pursue it they learn everything to learn about wisdom so the first thing we have to correct in love tonight is that favor is merited favor is merited to call the entirety of favor unmerited access is not exactly right so let's divine favor i'll give you a few definitions Number one, favor is divine help, divine assistance. Favor is divine help, divine assistance. God in partnership with men. God in partnership with men, providing help and assistance to one's life and destiny. Favor is divine help divine assistance god in partnership with men providing help providing assistance to your life and your destiny please write it down divine help divine assistance are we together so when god graciously participates in your life your success your destiny and now coordinates men to also support the course of your life and your destiny we say you are favored and i told you favor is not unmerited favor is merited proverbs chapter 13 and verse 15 here's the scripture that the lord gave me to deliver me from that understanding that favor is unmerited please read with me if you're a child of god ready one to read good understanding giveth favor but the way of transgressors is hard one more time uh-huh 
Now please keep that scripture there. I understand this scripture to be in... Um, it's, it's like two women who are both pregnant. The name of the first woman is called Good Understanding. And this woman is pregnant. When she gives birth to a child, the name of the child that comes from her is called Favor. Are we together? On this other side, there is another woman who is also pregnant. Her name is Transgression. She gives birth to a child. The name of that child is Hardship. So both favor and hardship are children that come from mothers. One mother is called good understanding. One other mother is called transgression. You know what transgression is? Violation of patterns. So this mother called good understanding can give birth to a child. And we call the child favor. This other mother called transgression can give birth to a child. Hardship has an explanation. It's not just a sociological phenomena. It's not the absence of privilege and advantage. Hardship. Now, it's a very uncomfortable truth. Because when you talk like this, many people get offended. Especially those who may, may, may seem to be going through all kinds of problems. Whether financially and all of that. But you must be open hearted. Let God be the way of the transgressor is hard. This is very, very Can I share with you a few keys as we pray? Because we are going to pray. Hmm. There are about four or five keys that I want to give you tonight that control and activate this grace called favor and it is my prayer in the name of jesus for you who are here and all who are following that in the name of jesus you obtain grace to walk in keeping with these principles this is the good understanding that brings favor i assure you many of you you see let me tell you within a short time you will be surprised to see the beauty and the glory that comes out of your life and you see the surprising thing is that your prayer life will not go down. No, you are learning God's way. The surprising thing is that your passion for God will even be ever increasing. Are we together? Key number one. The first key that activates this grace, this mysterious grace called favor in the life of individuals, the life of businesses, companies, politicians, businessmen, ministers of the gospel, churches. It doesn't matter who. It's a principle that works for any, everybody. Are you ready? Key number one, honor. The first key that controls favor is honor. Please write it down. Honor is the key to access. Anytime a door closes before you and refuses to open, I can tell you the name of the padlock that was used to lock that door is called dishonor. Let's define honor very quickly. What is honor? Honor is the discerning. Please write it down. Honor is the discerning. Comma. Honor is the celebrating and honor is the rewarding of men for their distinctive difference the discerning the rewarding or the celebrating and the rewarding of men for their distinctive difference their uniqueness is called honor so real honor starts with discernment all men are equal in Christ. The same Lord is rich unto us. But as far as the discipline of purpose, the sacrifice of destiny is concerned, all men are not the same. You must have the fortitude to recognize and to discern the difference. In the example I gave you earlier on, what, what, what do you think is the difference between the senior advocate 
and the young man who was about to start his law practice, I will tell you the difference. The difference is years of investing to build credibility. The difference is years and pain, years of mistake. And the price that that senior advocate had to pay to learn. When you honor men, listen to me, it's not human worship. There is human worship which is wrong. But I can tell you this, great men are not great by mistake. They are testaments of endurance. We live in a world that has mastered the art of trivializing people. You see a wealthy man, you begin to curse him and say, wicked Nigerians. All of you just destroying our money. Yet that man was born and he slept under a bridge one day. You see a man of God who is anointed and blessed and God is showing him mercy. And you may say, oh, mind all these people. God just gave them grace and they are acting as if. Listen, Africa, we must learn this. Nigeria, we must learn this. The church, we must learn this. We are equal in Christ. But the men and women you see who are the gatekeepers today. Many of these men, if they tell you their stories, you will end up in tears. Testaments of endurance. I was returning back from Lagos and um, the pilot that flew us to return, um, when they were introducing the man, they said this is an award winning so, 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 and so, and so, one of the best and the finest in the industry. And when they said that we were happy, when we lifted all through the flight and when we landed, even me, I clapped. I said, that man, truly, he deserves every accolade. You can see the difference. You can see the intelligence and the professionalism. Now, for someone, you say, oh, well, pilots are pilots. Until the other version of this excellence flies you. Are we together now? Yes, sir. God's grace, absolutely phenomenal people, custodians of wisdom, people who you enter their office and you see awards from one end to the other as if they are selling it, and every single one was earned, and yet they sit down very humbly. Now, a wise person will quickly drop any man of God thing and say, Sir, what can you teach me within these five minutes? These awards are not a showcase. Let me tell you what most Nigerians will do. Is it just because you are lucky? What is award? Let me tell you what an award is. Award is a testament that you have paid the price and your world, even though selfish, they've been compelled to recognize it. Are we learning? Don't be offended. I'm a bit harsh. I'm pushing you for a reason. Honor. The discerning. The celebrating. And the rewarding of men for their distinctive difference. You hear me say this is a house of honor. It is for a reason. Seated here, the overflows and following online are thousands and eventually will evolve to millions of people. Some of these people are absolutely phenomenal people. Some of the people you may be sitting close to today, by the protocol of their profession, you may not even have the access to sit close to them. Is that true? Many preachers have closed the door of favor because of dishonor. In as much as you are anointed, remember you are captain only within your jurisdiction. Are we learning? Everybody say honor. Honor, honor is one of the mysteries that when you engage it will bring you favor almost immediately. You keep in... Let me... Worshiping... All of the days of my life, I'll be here helping you. All of the days of my life, I'll be here helping you. All of the days of my life, I'll be here holding you. All of the days of my life, I'll be holding you. All of the days of my life. Listen, 
if you have friends who love your money alone love your anointing alone love your ministry alone MOG if you leave ministry today the people who love you will they still love you CEO if you leave your job today can they, have you not seen politicians who lost elections and in a moment everybody who is saying yes I just left them who is the next person our world is full of selfishness let me give you an advice when you find people who love you for who you are pay the price and keep them swallow your pride and keep them not everybody has that time to love you for who you are this is wisdom and when god lifts you please obtain grace to see the people who love you sincerely the great are largely surrounded by psychophants for obvious reasons you must obtain grace that house help may not have money to give you but i assure you they will stand by you forever some of you love everybody except your children and yet when you are sick they are the ones who stand close to you can i tell you the truth do not forget that there are people who love you for who you are not what you have money can be deceptive anointing can be deceptive titles can be deceptive this is why many people are heartbroken and shattered into pieces today because they think they are popular they think they have crowds oh i have a great i'm a great politician i'm a great man of god i have thousands and millions of people can they be there standing for you can they cry with you and say we are here crying can i tell you a true friend is not one who stands with you a true friend is one who dies with you if you have a friend you can only live for you are wasting your time the real proof of friendship is not life is death i'm preaching you know, i'm only doing what god has asked me to do two more we have a few minutes number one honor you see that favor is merited do you agree with me now when you learn this and someone says you are just lucky just pray the prayer of mercy for the person oh why are you favored like this why does everybody love you i think you are just lucky oh dear don't be angry just give them this message number one honor number two value number three relationships number four the fourth way that you activate this grace called favor is through prayer you can provoke favor through prayer favor is one of those systems of advantage that can be activated in prayer at jabez oh that thou wouldest bless me enlarge my coast let your hand be upon me hmm. you can pray favor i prayed for favor for one full month it was a february from first to the last month favor lord the heart of man is selfish but by your grace you are able to place something upon the heart of kings and nobles that can cause them to be attentive to your need when god says amen to your prayer it is truly amen god will raise a fish to bring out coin from his mouth does a fish eat coin but when favor is on you god can use pharaoh to give you gold everything has riches in it it only hides it is favor that allows them to give it the bible says as for the earth out of it comes bread please listen to me there are many of you right now the truth is that with the current price of land physically speaking you may never have the opportunity to build a house in your lifetime but favor can build one for you and give you the key just like that it's not a call to irresponsibility it's a system of advantage are you learning please go back this week um, 
I'll give us an assignment by the Spirit when we're wrapping up. Use this week among the many prayers you will pray. Pray favor provoking prayer. Lord, show me favor. I didn't come from a family with any advantage by default. If you do not help me, I don't have an uncle or an auntie somewhere. But I look to Yahweh. Yahweh. My hope is Yahweh. Yahweh. I look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Forever Yahweh. Yahweh. One more time. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Listen, remember that men are not your source, they are only channels, the real source, praise God. From whom all blessings flow. The hymn writer says. It comes from God. It only comes through men. When you exalt men above God. You are in trouble. Can I tell you this? Truly. God can give favor to men. God can pick you like this. And say where is he? I, I'm, I'm, I'm in Abuja here. And God can pick you. And give an instruction. And tell men to honor you. And in one week, God can use men to change your life in a way that you'll be afraid of your own testimony. Believe this. Oh, favor. Favor provoking prayer. There is a way you can hold on to the four horns of the altar. Except you are not tired of your situation. If you keep giving flimsy excuses, you may sit down there as a preacher, as a businessman. You are not just an entrepreneur. You can go back. My father and my God, I bow my knees to our father and begin to pray. Favor, oh God. I call for favor. And whilst you are praying, God will wake someone and say the one billion that you have kept for charity to help people there is one of my sons and my daughters that requires help from there that person is the only breadwinner out of 12 people if you do not arise listen how did the salvation of the gentiles come read your bible acts chapter 10 cornelius was praying cornelius was sowing seeds and god himself told peter get up don't call what i've called clean unclean there is a call carry your presence straight to the house of cornelius that was where the salvation of the gentiles started listen i will talk about value you know increasing and sharpening your value brings 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 favor over, over the life of someone it talks about relationship Understanding, understanding and strengthening valuable relationship brings favor. I post talk about prayer. It was from this message I had the time favor provoking prayer. He said you can pray favor into your life by praying favor provoking prayer. This is a message you want to get. This grace called favor. You know, don't forget the keys. Honor, value. When you strengthen your value, relationship. You need to value relationship. It is wrong when you don't value relationship. In fact, many people don't see it as attack. When you have relationship and you notice you always have conflict with them. At the place of work, you have conflict with people. At your neighborhood, you have conflict. You don't, you don't, you don't, that your relationship with people are poor. Some of them are even demonic. When you begin to notice you're having too much, too much, too much, too much, you must strive with people. It's not a good thing. You need to value relationship. You need to. It's not about men pleasing. It's not about men pleasing. But it's not about men pleasing. But let the art of men be pleased with you.
you know, people that God has put around your life, you know, build a strong relationship with them. And this message will really transform your life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We've come to the end of this message. Seven, seven life transforming messages about Apostle Sama. You want to download these messages. You want to download these messages. You can check the description for links to download this message. These messages will transform your life. Seven most impactful messages by Apostle Joshua Simon. Watch it, like it, drop in the comment section your thoughts, your opinion about those videos. Do you want us to do more of this? What do you think? And you know, you can also tell us what we can improve on. Thank you very much. Thank you for joining us today at Kingdom Secret Rima. In this channel, we bring you content that will elevate your Christian journey. We bring you content that will hit your elevate the ministry of a believer we bring you content that will elevate the ministry of a young minister so subscribe to this channel like it comment and let's grow our like it comment and let's listen to this message because servant pastor shegun obaji talked about the days when he was on campus how they listen to kenneth here again messages he said one kiss it that they will listen to one cassette until the, the cassette is distuned, you know. So get this message. Let's let's embody the habit of listening to someone in our days, and let's listen to it well. Let's listen to it deep, you know. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. To so see you next time. Bye.